start by just explaining the difference between succession planning and estate planning. Because many people think that if they have a will, then they actually have done succession planning. Succession planning is about the continuity of business, and it's actually about transition. And first of all, management transition. Secondly, leadership transition. And thirdly, ownership transition. And so it actually is a process over time. One of the things I encourage people to think about is that succession planning, particularly for the older generation, who are the people who are in the driving seat, really, around the decision-making to do with succession planning, they really need to think about it as the beginning, not the end. So many people think it's about giving them a use-by date, something that's the end of their working days, when really good succession planning is something that happens throughout your working life with a view to your business continuing, with a view to giving an opportunity and providing an opportunity for the next generation. It actually should be something that's exciting and something that actually encompasses embracing the next generation and all that they have to offer. Too many of our young people are actually not returning to agriculture because we're not doing this well. It starts with us developing goals. And too many times I see people just making assumptions about what it is each other wants. And I think that that's a large mistake, something that we should do much better. We actually need to be clear about what these goals are so that we can actually set timelines in place. If there's one thing we have on our side, it's actually time. If we don't do it early enough, and leave not enough time, then we don't have enough options. So it's important that we're very clear about what our goals are, that we actually do this in a timely manner, and that we really think about the horizons of our business. Just, we have to be very conscious of what the viability of the business is. Too many people don't understand what viability really is, and so they do an assets minus liabilities equals a lot of dollars and think, well, it can do just about anything. Most of us who really are involved in agriculture understand what a capital intensive pursuit it is. And that doesn't necessarily correlate with high levels of cash flow and profitability. And so it's something that we need to focus on, but also something we need to understand well. So that our goals are actually set in reality, not in unreality. And really when we're working through a succession planning process, this understanding and respect is what underpins effective communication. Parents also need to understand that they must develop their plans for their future early rather than leaving it too late because if they don't have clarity about what they need and therefore give the business time to provide what they need, then they actually provide a blockage, they're a blockage to the next generation actually being able to begin to transition into our businesses. And it's very important to understand that. We need to have communication strategies so that as young people are considering coming home to the family farm, A, the family farm is prepared, but also we have some strategies for actually how we're going to make decisions and how we're going to communicate. Because too often people come home and they don't have the conversations that should be had. So A, we don't determine what the goals are, we don't determine what the transition plan's like, we don't actually work out what our roles and responsibilities are, what we're going to be paid, what we can expect. And we really do need to have a strategy around how to communicate because mums and dad businesses can kind of just communicate at the breakfast table, in bed at night, whenever they talk. But when we start to bring the next generation in, we actually need to formalise this and view a bit more structure as being our friend so that we do this much better. Too many times I see people subject to substandard advice and it really has, I'm a bit over it, I'm sick of working with people who have been to somebody and had a bit of a crack at succession as they say, a crack at it, and it's ended up creating issues and then I'm left mopping up people's issues. Really, a good succession planning is embedded in proactivity. It's not reactive. It's something that's done early. It's considered a part of good business planning. It actually recognises that the people who, have to, who are there to help 
need to have qualifications. So just about every man whose dog hangs up a shingle nowadays and says they do succession planning. An accountant, for instance, says I do taxation, I do superannuation, I do financial planning, I do this, I do that, and I do succession planning. A solicitor will say I do conveyancing, litigation, family law, estate planning, and I do succession planning. An agronomist says I do farm business planning, I do operational plans, paddock plans, agronomy, succession planning. Without really understanding that to do this well, there must be, there must be formal qualifications in facilitation, conflict resolution, communication, truly understanding business viability and understanding what actually happens on farm. They do under, have to understand various aspects of law and of course taxation. So it is a broad brush, a broad breadth of expertise that's required and it actually means that people need to be trained. So if someone says to you they haven't done any training in conflict resolution or communication processes, that tells me straight up that they actually don't understand what's involved in succession planning. And so I'd run a mile. I'd make sure that the people who help me actually have got this training. I cannot do all the succession planning in Australia, but the one thing I would like to have people understand is that they must absolutely not settle for substandard advice. And I think don't expect that it can all be done in a day. It's not an event. It's a process over time. And giving ourselves the benefit of time is the gift we have when sometimes we don't have a lot of other things. And so we really need to understand that. We must remember not to leave people out of the process. Just because we don't think we can communicate well with an in-law doesn't mean we should shut the door on them. A, those people have a view. B, they're stakeholders in this family business. And C, if there's something we don't like about what they've got to say, then best we know about it than pretend it doesn't exist. And by the way, we might actually learn something from these people. They're often the gifts in our families. We need to remember not to be adversarial. This is about our family. It's about the people we love the most in the world. It's about land we love, we've worked very hard for, and possibly generations before us have. And so it's important that we work collaboratively. If anybody sits in a room and says it's about them and us, then straight away, it's wrong. It is a collaborative process. It needs to meet the needs of all the stakeholders. Mum and Dad come first because they're older. The next generation comes second, and one day they'll be the mum and dad. But we really need to understand that we've worked our mm -hmm. lifetime for the benefit of our children, and so we need to understand that it's collaborative, and we must approach it mm -hmm. this way.